Hey class, welcome back. In our second lesson, we're going to be taking a look at gear ratios. First, let's review what we talked about in our last lesson. In our last lesson, we talked about where gears are used. Remember, gears are used in drills and in robots, for example. We also talked about how gears can change. Gears can change things on your robot like speed, torque, and direction. And lastly, we talked about different gears that are used in our robot. Do you remember what type of gears we use? We use what are called spur gears. And there's some examples of some spur gears right there. Now gears are used in robotics because gears give us what's called a mechanical advantage. And mechanical advantage is how many times a machine can multiply force. By itself, the motor only has a certain value of torque and speed. And by adding gears, we can increase the torque or we can increase the speed by using those big plastic gears that you find in your box. When we use two different size gears, here's a big gear and a small gear, we are going to change what's called a gear ratio. All right, what is a ratio? Can you think of some examples of what a ratio is? Maybe those of you that play sports are familiar with different types of ratios. Maybe those of you in math class are learning about what ratios are. So a ratio is when you compare two numbers. Sometimes it's written as a fraction. Sometimes it's written with a semicolon. But a gear ratio is when you compare two different size gears. A ratio is where you compare two different numbers. And so next we're going to talk about how gear ratios are used in robotics. So remember that a gear ratio is going to compare two different size gears. A gear ratio can, when we use two different gears, can increase or decrease the torque and speed of your robot. They can also allow you to change direction of where the motors and the wheels spin. Take a look over here in the picture on the side. We have a gear ratio. We have a large gear and a small gear. All right, the large gear and the small gear all right, are going to be used in a way to give us either torque or speed. Whether we get torque or speed will determine on which axle we go ahead and we put the gears on to our robot. So what is this gear ratio that I keep talking about? So a gear ratio can be two things. It can compare the number of teeth. If you take a look at the two gears here, we have a small gear here. Maybe it has 12 teeth. And we have this larger gear. Maybe it has 36 teeth. So our gear ratio is comparing the 12 tooth gear to the 36 tooth gear. All right. Another way that we can write a gear ratio is by comparing the number of rotations. In this instance here, maybe we put a little tape or a little bit of marker on our gears. And we can notice that when these gears spin, this little gear is going to have to spin three times for this one gear to spin once. And so by being able to look in your imagination and seeing how the gears spin, you'll be able to see whether or not the gears are giving you torque or speed. Lastly, when we write a gear ratio, we are comparing the output gear, which is the gear that is attached to the wheel, to the driver gear, the one that's attached to the motor. I'm gonna say this a few times, but the way that you can remember it is that driver ends in R and motor ends in R. Now, if you take a different robotics class or a class in physics in the future, they might compare driven to driver. They might compare output to input. I'm trying to make it as easy as possible for you to understand. When you take a look at a gear ratio, you're going to be comparing the output gear to the driver gear. What is the difference? Well, take a look at your gears. Take a look at the gear that's attached to the wheel and the gear that's attached to the motor. Those are the only two gears that you have to worry about. The output or driven gear is the one that's attached to the wheel. So here's our output gear over here. This is the one that's attached to the wheel. The one that's attached to the wheel is being turned by the driver gear. So the driver gear or the input gear, is the one that's being turned by the motor. So the way that I try to remember which one is which is remember that motor and driver both end in R. So in this instance here, the motor axle, all right, is spinning this little tiny gear. This little tiny gear is then spinning the gear that's attached to the wheel, and that's the one that's going to turn. And we're only worried about those two. If you've got three or four gears in between, we're not worried about those. Right now, we're just worried 
about the gear attached to the motor and the gear that's attached to the output. Because when we're doing a gear ratio, we don't have to worry about those other gears uh, that are in between. We're only worried about the one attached to the motor and the one attached to um, the wheel. So again, output is attached to the wheel and driver is attached to the motor. Driver and motor both end in R. So to figure out your gear ratio, you have to take a look at your robot and you have to identify which one is the output gear. As we said, that's the one attached to the wheel. Then we have to identify which gear is the driver gear. That's the one that's attached to the motor. Remember motor and driver end in R. We can either count the number of teeth on our output gear. Maybe in this case, it's 36 and this one is 12. And then we compare it to the number of teeth that's on the driver gear. And then we write it, as you see down here on the bottom, output to driver, in this case, 36, semicolon, 12. And that is our gear ratio. Now, because we want to use proper math terminology, we want to reduce. So in this case here, 36 divides by 12, and it gives you 3, and 12 divided by 12 gives us 1. So our gear ratio is 3 to 1. Now that's our gear ratio, and that's how we go ahead and we find it. This chart is another way to look at gear ratios. As we said, a gear ratio, we compare the number of teeth on the output and the number of teeth on the driver. Remember, driver is our motor gear, and the output is the gear on the wheel. We're not worried about any other gears in between. So to find a ratio, we take our output gear, and we compare it to our driver gear. So let's take a look at the gear ratio we have here on the bottom of the page. So our driver gear has 12 teeth, okay? And our output gear has 36 teeth. We go ahead and we write it over here, 36 and 12. We reduce it to three to one. And so our ratio is three to one. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that this gear ratio is giving us turning power or what we said, torque. So how can we figure out that this has torque? Well, in your imagination, if you can imagine that here's your motor, all right, your motor's attached to your driver, and this motor is spinning this gear, all right, pretty slowly, and as that gear is spinning pretty slowly, it's spinning this gear pretty slow as well. So a three to one gear ratio means for every three turns that this driver gear makes, the output gear is only going to be turning once. So again, for every three turns of the driver gear, the output gear is only turning once. And because it's turning slowly, just because it's turning slowly doesn't mean that's bad. It means that it's giving us more torque. Here's another example that's going to give us what's called speed. All right, so again, gear ratio. A gear ratio, we compare the output teeth to the driver teeth. Remember, the output teeth is the gear that's attached to the wheel, and the driver is the one that's attached to the motor because driver and motor both end in R. In this case here, we've now swapped the gears. Our driver gear, the one attached to the motor, has 36 teeth, and our output gear, the one attached to the wheel, has 12 teeth. So we write it up here in our ratio, 12 to 36. And then we reduce the 12 to 36 to 1 to 3. And so we write our ratio 1 to 3. And this is going to give us speed. Here's another way to look at it. Okay, A 1 to 3 ratio means for every one turn of this big driver gear, it's going to spin this output gear three times. And in your imagination, if you can imagine this big gear turning, this little tiny gear, you can hopefully imagine your imagination seeing this little gear spin really, 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 really fast. All right. And some of you have already done that on your robot. And by using those two gears, you were creating a gear ratio that gave your robot some speed. Now, I don't want to confuse you, but if you look here on the bottom of your paper, you can, or bottom of the page, you can see how the speed increases right? But the torque decreases. So there is a relationship between those two. So finding that right balance is super important. So these are the two gears side by side. First, we have our gear ratio built for torque. You can see that we have our output gear 
and our driver. Remember, driver is the one attached to the motor. So we put a little gear on our motor. That little gear is going to turn once. And when that little gear turns once, it's only going to turn this big gear a third of a turn. All right. Let's take a look at the other one, our speed gear. All right. With our speed gear, we've got our motor attached to the 36 tooth gear. And when that gear spins once, it's going to spin this little guy three times. And you can see on the bottom that relationship between the torque and the speed based on where the gears are applied to your robot. So let's wrap it up with a quick review. So where are gears used? We've talked about that quite a bit. Gears can change speed, torque, and direction. We talked about how gears that we are using are called spur gears. And we talked about how to find a gear ratio. We compare the output gear to the driver gear. All right. Remember, the output gear is the one attached to the wheel, and the driver gear is attached to the motor, and we want to make sure that we reduce. Thanks for listening.